So last week, I got to go back to my high school and remind some beautiful people that they matter. Some high schoolers, elementary schoolers, middle schoolers, that the truth is, before the world knew you and put your bare labels on you, or you put labels on yourself, God knew you. God formed you. You matter. Your worth is set. The world can't touch it, can't take it away. And so in case you need that reminder today, I hope this blesses you. I wasn't even the girl by the 
that seventh grade could confidently tell you really where she fit in. I was the girl that when I found my friends in eighth grade, for the next five years, I filled my calendar with them, or school, or sports, tennis, running, working out, family. Because I associated how busy my life was with how important my life was. I was the girl that after that she had to all figure out. But literally I had no clue what she was doing. And so she just kept doing more and doing more and doing more. Hoping that somehow by doing more, it would make her feel good enough. Because across the board, whether that ball was sitting in that section with the horrible pair of buttons in eighth grade, or in that section with her class bird, it was that question of, is what I'm doing good enough? That always rocked my brain. And love it, I think if we're really honest, that question gets us all from time to time. Students, is, is what I'm doing good enough to get the grades that, honestly, maybe I don't even want for myself, but my parents seem to really want for me, or these colleges seem to really want for me to get into them. Or maybe it's not like I'm doing it all. It's just what I'm doing good enough, not just to make JP, but to make Marcy, to get the girl, to keep the guy, to get the relationship, to be in the group. Parents, teachers, is, is what I'm doing good enough to provide for my kids in the way that I want to? Leadership. This is what I'm doing good enough to create out here the vision for the school I see in here. And what happens is that question is what I'm doing good enough becomes an I good enough. And maybe you are nothing like me and you have your entire life to go. And if that's the case, we need to talk after this because I need to know what you do. But for the one person that's like me, and you ask yourself that question, maybe regularly. I think the reason that we do is because we associate our worth with what we do. But let's think through how silly that is for a second. I imagine there are some people in this room that are excited for what is infamous founders they came. And I know it's on the menu because I checked before I got here. Now, wouldn't it be silly? If you want a piece of Love is Found JK, and you were looking for it, and Love is Pete Walk That would be a little silly. Now, wouldn't it be clear if you were looking for it in the PE Walk Room, and then you didn't find it, you associated with the fact that you didn't find it there with the fact that it didn't exist anywhere else in the school? Be a little silly. And my point is that is what we do with our work and our value every single day. We look for it in places it is never meant to be found, and when we don't find it, we associate its absence with its non-existence. And so if I could go back to that girl, I would tell her, Amy, if you don't define your worth, you will default to what the world defines as, which will always be in what you do, how you look, what you accomplish, what others think of you, it never is who you are. Every now and I mentioned uh, our very first week too that I write devotionals. And for those of you who don't know, a devotional is simply a way of reflection. It holds you accountable to connecting with your heart before you start your day. And the reason I started writing devotionals is because I learned at a young age the importance of taking time to connect with your heart before the day starts. It was here at the school, actually. It was my junior year. Did you not? I'd be on that track outside at 4.30 each morning. I know I'm a little crazy. But 4.30 each morning before school started, connecting with my heart, connecting with my body, connecting with my mind before my day started. But you want to know a secret? And this is about to say within this family meeting here. The reason I started doing that was not because I was so disciplined or so motivated or so hardworking, which is what a lot of people initially thought. It was because I was so anxious. I was so anxious. I recognized that if I don't take time to connect with the one who gives me my work, which is a Christian, I believe to be Jesus Christ. Before my day starts, 
then I'm going to be anxious wreck trying to find my work in everything that I do, in all my grades and scores, and what everybody else thinks of me the entire time. And what I love is that we see in the text in Mark that Jesus, even Jesus, who, he's the son of God. In Christian theology, he's like the guy. He's the dude, right? This guy's busy. He's got things to do. We see Jesus do this. He goes to a secluded place. He takes time before his day starts to connect with the one who gives him his work, which is Heavenly Father. And why does he do that? I absolutely know Brother Allen as a not a scholar, but I think it's because he wanted to show us by example that when we do that, we are reminded our work comes from a much higher place. That as Jeremiah tells us, it is given to us by Heavenly Father that knew us before this world did. Which means that the world and our crazy busy schedule and what everybody else thinks of us and how we feel about ourselves that day and the scoreboard, and the grades, and the jobs, and the titles, none of that can take it away. Your work is set. It's permanent. It doesn't fluctuate. And I believe, truly, whatever my work might be, that if we have more people walk out of those back doors with that posture and that understanding, that's how things change to speak. That's how relationships see us. That's how walls come down. That's how progress is made. That's how momentum is built. When you, no matter how old you are, no matter where you sit in this room today, when you are connected with the undeniable fact that you matter and that your work is set, you can remind other people of the same. And so love it. To close out this quick family meeting, I challenge you. Remember that you matter. That your neighbor matters. How you love, how you act, how you carry yourself matters. And that your work is not out there. And all the things that might be going through your mind right now is not out there. It's in here. Because when you shine that light, other people can't help but shine the same. Thank you. I hope that this blessed you and encouraged you, reminded you that God gave you a unique light and it is your job to shine it in this world because we need you to. That being said, if you were blessed by this message and you can think of anybody else that also needs this type of encouragement, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. Uh, it helps me out a lot and helps this message that I do believe God gave my heart to share with the world gets out. I hope you have such a an amazing rest of your day.